Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. With the impending launch of NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 30 series, I suspect some gamers out there will be on the lookout for a new monitor to take advantage of the GPU power that's being promised this generation. One sort of candidate, particularly at the top end of the market, is going to be 4K 144Hz displays. So now is the perfect time to review a new entrant to the 4K 144Hz market. And this isn't just any 4K high refresh monitor. This is one of the cheapest displays of those specs that you can get. It's the Viotech GFI 27QXA, a known budget monitor brand that we've talked about a bit on the channel. A number of their past offerings have been great options for price conscious shoppers, and the GFI 27QXA being cheaper than practically Practically all of its competitors brings that selling point once again. But I should stress here that when I say cheap, what I mean is cheap relative to its direct competitors. Some people get really upset when I say that anything other than a $200 monitor is cheap. So let's just clear that one up. 4K 144Hz is a high-end monitor spec, essentially flagship specs in 2020. So the GFI 27QXA is not a low-cost monitor. Its price tag of $750 US though, occasionally available for less than $700, is priced less than its competitors, which are typically priced at $800 and above. No, you're not getting $200 4K monitors yet, but this is bringing the price down for what is an attractive feature set. Let's recap the specifications. This is a 27 inch 3840 by 2160 IPS display with a maximum 144 Hz refresh rate, which is achieved through overclocking according to the product page. So out of the box, you're getting a 120 Hz experience and then you flick a switch in the settings, boom, the monitor is 144 Hz. There's also adaptive sync functionality here, usual spiel here about LFC support, works fine with AMD and Nvidia GPUs, all that usual stuff. There is a catch to the 144Hz functionality though, and it's a pretty big one. While the monitor does support up to 120Hz refresh rates fine over a single DisplayPort cable, there is no such support for 144Hz. The only way you can get that refresh rate in combination with a 4K resolution is through running dual DisplayPort cables. You retain adaptive sync functionality in this mode, but dual cables is clunky and you need to make sure you have two good quality cables for it to work properly. And so we've essentially already found a downside to this monitor and we're not that far into this review. In my opinion, running dual cables for 4K 144Hz is old technology. Display stream compression has been around for a while now and is found in monitors like the Nixius NX EDG 274K that we reviewed a few weeks back. DSC allows for 4K 144Hz over a single cable, no problems at all. It really should be the minimum standard for high refresh 4K monitors in 2020. Viotech kind of dropped the ball on this one and having to run 144Hz over two cables is disappointing. Normally I'd also say that in a $700 plus monitor you'd want HDMI 2.1, but given this is a lower cost monitor for these specs and we aren't even getting DSC over DisplayPort, I can probably forgive no HDMI 2.1, but no ability to hit 144Hz over a single cable is not good enough given the overall price tag and longevity that you'd expect from a 4K display like this. On a more positive note, the GFI 27QXA's design is quite good. It doesn't have a top of the line premium build, but the mostly plastic construction here looks nice, complemented by metal legs. It's a big step up over the Nixius NX EDG 274K, which has a design I'd struggle to praise on a $200 display. What Viatek is doing here is neat without offering anything fancy. On the back, there's a few LEDs, there's some red highlights on the stand, and overall the build quality is good. We're getting a decent range of adjustability, including height, tilt, swivel, and pivot, exactly what I'd expect from this tier of display. Unfortunately though, there's no directional toggle for controlling the OSD. Face buttons are a bit awkward here. There's a typical range of features in here that won't blow you away by any stretch. On the back, in addition to the dual DisplayPort inputs, there's also two HDMI ports, limited to 4K 60Hz. This next section on response times is, quite frankly, a bit bizarre. That's because the GFI 27QXA behaves in a way that I've never seen before in a monitor. In short, the left and right halves of this display produce vastly different response time numbers, especially with overdrive enabled. This means that as moving objects pass from one side of the display through to the other, there is a noticeable shift in the level of blur and ghosting at the halfway point. It's a stark cutoff between the left and the right halves, suggesting to me that the monitor is operating in a half-half tiled mode, likely to facilitate the dual DisplayPort cable functionality. The issue 
here being that the left and the right halves haven't been tuned to the same performance. It's a noticeable issue with the monitor, and it's especially obvious on either the low or middle overdrive modes. When playing fast-paced games, there is a clear transition point where moving side to side, objects can either gain ghost trails or gain inverse ghosting at the split in the halves. This can be distracting and at times feels like the right half of the monitor has a bad post-processing filter applied to give objects a bright outline. It's not something that I've seen before. And this is a highly repeatable issue. I've now had the same problem with two units. Firetech sent out a second after I flagged the problem with my first unit. And also I've been able to repeat it with different PCs, different graphics cards, AMD or Nvidia, and different configurations. It's present in both dual and single cable operations. Based on my investigation, it appears to be a fundamental flaw with the hardware. Now to be fair to this monitor, the issue isn't very noticeable when overdrive is disabled, and while it is still there to a small degree, you probably won't notice. When checking the numbers at 120Hz, the left half of the display has about a 10.2ms greater grey average, while the right half has an 8.8ms average, same sort of overshoot characteristics. The right half is 16% faster in these tests, but again, not that significant, and you're unlikely to notice. Of course, the main issue with overdrive disabled is just that the response times are too slow for 144Hz or even 120Hz gaming, especially the left half. With that said, you might choose to use it over some of the other modes that we're about to go through. Here's what happens with low overdrive. The left half has an 8.27ms greater grey average with no overshoot, while the right half has a 3.2ms average with significant overshoot. In fact, more than half of all transitions experienced inverse ghosting. This is why we see that stark difference between the left and the right halves, and why objects pick up bright trails when moving from the left half to the right half. In the left half, we see some dark ghost trails, which aren't too bad, though not fantastic. In the right half, we get massive inverse ghosting and obvious bright trails. To be honest, the issue is made worse by the fact that objects can pick up bright trails instantly as they move across the display. The transition point is super obvious, and I think people would be less likely to notice the high overshoot levels if the entire display was uniform. That contrast between left and right sides is very annoying. Similar story with the middle overdrive mode. Left side has a 5.68ms greater grey average, which would be pretty decent for this display if it applied to both halves. But no, the right half has the same roughly 3.1ms average and same high level of overshoot. When switching to the high overdrive mode, now we're basically in a position where both halves exhibit noticeable inverse ghosting. Based on this investigation, it looks like there is something broken with the display modes with the right half of the display. It's particularly curious how the performance on the right half is largely unchanged throughout the low, middle, and high modes. The fact that this behavior was seen across two separate units, the second after Viotech knew about the bug, again suggests to me this is a flaw and might be seen with all units. The only mode that I can actually recommend with this display is the off mode, where you're not as likely to spot the issue, and certainly there's no stark transition point between the left and right, like with the low or middle modes. But in this mode, the display doesn't really have the response times to deliver a true 144Hz experience. At best, we're seeing a 100 or even 90Hz-like performance, given average greater grade transition times are around the 10 millisecond mark. So in general, the response time performance here is a bit of a mess, and it becomes quite hard to recommend this display based on what is seen here. I'm really not sure why Viotech was unable to correct this problem at the factory or ship this monitor in this state. I reviewed a lot of monitors at this point, and this is the first with this issue. Maybe they didn't expect anyone to notice. Really strange and points to bad quality control for this particular model. Compared to other displays, the Viotech GFI 27QXA is clearly providing an inferior response time experience. With the only usable mode delivering 10 millisecond averages, this display falls well behind other monitors on the market in this price category. The Nixius NX EDG 274K stands out as being an option that offers 6 millisecond response times and far better refresh rate compliance. In our compliance chart, the GFI 27QXA really can't deliver a true 144Hz experience, whereas the Nixius monitor can. 
Input latency as a result of this is below average, and certainly nothing to write home about. While the slow response times contribute a big chunk to latency, a processing delay of nearly 3 milliseconds is also a little below other monitors you can get right now. Moving on to color performance, let's breeze through this section. By default, the GFI 27QXA delivers an average color experience. It's not the most accurate monitor going around, with my unit having a slight red tint out of the box, which delivered around a 3.0 Delta E2000 average. There is also oversaturation when viewing sRGB content, as this display is a wide gamut panel with 93% P3 coverage. That's decent for an IPS display and is the ballpark of being suitable for wide gamut creative work, but of course limits performance in the sRGB mode. Like a lot of monitors we test, performance can be improved somewhat through OSD tweaks, however the unclamped gamut remains an issue for sRGB content, so the only way to get the best performance out of this display is through a full calibration. Results as expected are quite good, and if you have the tools available to you, this panel is inherently capable of excellent colours. 360 nits of peak brightness is decent as well, that's a typical number from a non-HDR monitor and should be suitable for most use cases. Contrast ratio is a little above average from an IPS monitor and nearly 1300 to 1, which provides somewhat deeper blacks than other options. With that said, you're not getting very deep blacks compared to VA displays, which are better options for gaming in dark environments. Viewing angles are excellent, no complaints there, while uniformity is okay. Not the best I've seen from a premium IPS display, but serviceable and unlikely to cause many issues with buyers. I didn't see much IPS glow with my units, but this does vary from panel to panel, so your mileage may vary on that one. Overall, the Viotech GFI 27QXA is a very disappointing monitor. I was really looking forward to checking out this one and seeing just how good 4K 144Hz can be for $750 or so. On paper, given the price difference to other monitors of the same specs, this could have been a great buy for those people thinking of doing a major PC upgrade this year. We have Nvidia's RTX 30 series and new AMD GPUs on the horizon, perfect time for a PC overhaul and 4K 144Hz will quickly become possible with the power on offer this generation. Having monitors with these specs available at lower prices was perfect timing. But the reality is the GFI 27QXA is a technically flawed product that I cannot recommend. The differences in performance between the left and right halves of the display is an issue that I've never seen before and one that does noticeably impact gaming. The modes where the issue isn't as noticeable don't deliver fast enough response times for a true 144Hz experience. That's a fail in my books, and one that price reductions really can't overcome. In my opinion, Viotech never should have launched the monitor in this state. If the left-right performance issues weren't fixable, the product should have been cancelled. That issue is compounded by a lack of single cable 4K 144Hz support. In 2020, with features like display stream compression now available, it's not good enough to require dual display port cables to get the maximum refresh rate. That's old school technology, and on a $750 product that I'd want to last for years, I'd expect the latest technologies to satisfy my requirements now and in the future. And that's a shame because there's there's not a whole lot wrong with the panel itself. 5 millisecond response times with decent overshoot handling appears to be possible here, which would have led to a strong 144Hz experience if it weren't for the two halves issue. There's also 93% DCI P3 coverage, which is not bad at all, and respectable brightness, contrast, and viewing angles. If it weren't for that flaw, there's genuinely a lot to like here. Ultimately, it's not worth wasting $750 on a high-end monitor with serious flaws, even if it's cheaper than the competition. For just $100 more, you can grab the Nixius equivalent, which, design aside, is far better, well worth spending the extra cash on that one. There's also the LG 27GN950 that we're hoping to review soon at $800, and other upcoming monitors like the EVE Spectrum 4K. Lots of options around this mark, more than enough not to buy the Viotech GFI 27QXA. That's it for this review. If you appreciate our monitor testing, pointing out sometimes things that perhaps you shouldn't buy, uh, then please support our display testing through our Patreon page. Links are in the description below. You'll get access to all the ICC profiles we create for our monitors. There's also our Discord chat if you want to ask me questions about monitors. I'm always in there responding to that sort of thing. Monthly live streams, behind the scenes, videos, all that sort of stuff is also available through there. Another way to support the channel is just by subscribing to get more monitor content in in your inbox shortly and if you're more interested in how maybe those rtx 30 series gpus are performing well now is also a good time to subscribe because our performance review it's not too far away so thanks everyone for watching and i'll catch you in the next one